To understand how we can most effectively use multimedia instruction, we will turn to Dr. Richard Mayer, an educational psychologist who developed the cognitive theory of multimedia learning. Let's begin by exploring how the brain processes information. One, learners process information through the use of two separate channels, an auditorial channel to process spoken words, music, and other auditorial elements, and a visual channel to process pictures, words, and animation. Two, each of these channels have a limited capacity. Learners can only take in a few pieces of information in each channel at one time. And three, learning is an active process of filtering, selecting, organizing, and integrating information based upon prior knowledge. But what does this actually look like? As your learners view your multimedia presentations of words and pictures, their brains will work hard to create logical mental models to help them understand and remember. The brain has three memory stores, sensory memory, working memory, and long-term memory. The sensory memory will filter any auditorial information, such as narration or music, into the auditorial channel, and the images, diagrams, and text in the visual channel. Information is stored here in its entirety for a very brief moment. After that initial moment, the learner will start to work with the information in order to process it and learn. In the working memory, the learner will choose relevant sounds and relevant images. These two sets of information are then organized into separate models that help the learner to understand and remember the information. Finally, the learner integrates these separate models with their prior knowledge and experiences. Once all the information has been combined into a meaningful way, the new knowledge can move into long-term memory. So students just don't tune into your multimedia lessons and automatically retain the information presented. Their brains are actively filtering, selecting, organizing, and integrating information. Learning is a complex and active process. To look at this diagram in greater detail, you can refer to the handout located in the information section below this video. So, due to the limited capacity with each of these channels, a potential problem is cognitive overload. Cognitive overload occurs when too many tasks or too much information are shared with a learner simultaneously and overloads a learner's working memory. This results in the learner being unable to process this information. This can cause learners to feel frustrated, tune out, or give up on a learning task. Along with his theory, Mayer has developed the 12 principles of multimedia learning. These principles help to reduce cognitive overload and maximize learning. In the accompanying videos, we're going to cover his 12 principles in order to learn how best to structure multimedia learning experiences to maximize learner comprehension. I've divided the principles into segments, each with examples on how you can apply them in your teaching and course development.